Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about from cripple to coach. And you know, that's not really a, a combo that ends up happening. <laughs> you know, you don't really think of that when that when you put those two, two together. So luckily for me, I have special guest Elsa here who's going to help us understand why we need to be thinking about this. So thank you so much, Elsa. I appreciate you coming on my show today. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a privilege to be on. Let's think about it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I guess I really want to know, you know, when you develop this disease that you felt like, right, it, there was no light at the end of the tunnel, what really motivated you to create that shift in your perspective? Oh, great question. Well, what happened was I was very sick. I was, um, I had a young family, three young kids at home and a, a husband. And I would just, I was in so much pain and it was progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And in fact, I got so crippled up that I couldn't even open and close my hands anymore. I was just starting to shrivel up. Oh, it was, wow. oh, it was terrible. And, and I always say, there's a lot of things you do with your hands that you don't want someone else to have to do for you. So, exactly. it, was, <laughs> so it was not nice. Um, Plus, you know, at that time as well, I was very sick, but also um, my brother at the same time was diagnosed with cancer and we mm -hmm. did not have any cancer in our family at all. And all of a sudden my brother was diagnosed with it. My aunt, I had a cousin that was also diagnosed like all around the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a big, uh, you know, just a big eye opener of, whoa, something needs to change here. Something's going on. There's got to be a shift. Yeah, most definitely. Well, that would take a big, like, red flag, and like light bulb, sirens, whatever you need to get that moment of like, you know what, something has to give, something has to happen. And so there has to be a common denominator that is causing all of this. So that's, but what made you go into coaching? You yes. could have gone into anything, like why go into coaching? <laughs> Yeah, well, the, how I actually ended up getting better and over this, putting this autoimmune disease into remission was I saw a new doctor after many, many doctor appointments and um, they couldn't seem to find anything that was wrong. And then they just said, well, we need to, you know, you need to start taking really strong anti-inflammatories, strong pain medications for the rest of your life. And I just wanted to get to the root of the problem. So I saw a naturopathic doctor and she suggested that I try just changing what I was eating, cutting out the processed food and going with whole real food instead. And I say that was my aha moment in life where I was like, what? Like just what I'm eating is making me very sick. And yeah. so I did what she said. And two weeks later, I was almost completely better. It was wow. mind blowing. I literally went into her office and gave her a big hug and just said, you've literally changed my life. Cause she did. I went from being a cripple to literally, I was basically pain free and fine after just a couple of weeks. It was oh, amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's and a big so, drastic change. It was huge. And so of course, you know, going through that change myself. And as I started to just change what I was eating, cutting out the inflammatory foods, then the weight just shed off me. I was carrying an extra 30 pounds. So I was fat, I was sick, I was tired. And uh, the weight just kind of started to shed off. And so of course, other people would see me and say, whoa, like, what are you doing? You know, like, you look amazing. You have so much yeah. energy. And so, and so then I would say, well, this is what I'm doing. You know, I, you might want to try whatever. And so finally, I just had so many people coming and asking me and I thought, you know what? I was so passionate at that point about it that I wanted to help everybody. And I say, that's my deep down why for what I do is I wanted to end the, you know, the cycle of disease and death in my own family, but also in the family of anybody else that I can help. And so um, I decided that's it. I need to actually get certified, take my training so that I know what I'm doing and can officially give people the right information of what to do and coach them to become their best, best version of themselves as well. 
That's awesome. That's a great blessing to have and to feel like you're finally in your purpose to do yeah. what you're 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 good at doing and it comes naturally. And I feel like when it comes naturally to help others, then you're in the right field. You know what I mean? You're doing exactly what you need to do because it's not forceful, it's not tiring, like it has its moments, but life is life is always gonna have its it's pressured moments, but it's the fact that you keep going and you keep wanting to help more people. I mean, come on, if you didn't, you wouldn't be on my show. You know what I mean? You wouldn't <laughs> want to let the world know and get your voice out there to let people know like the way you eat can truly affect you. And I've read articles, excuse me, where I've read articles where a lot of people from outside of the United States coming in, like from Europe specifically and Asia, where when they come in it's they get really really sick like crippling to your point where I've, where I've read where it's just the, the way that we process our foods and certain chemicals that we have in our foods are actually banned in a lot of co countries outside of the United States so it's kind of crazy to think that a lot of us are just immune or we've just developed this this tolerance to a point you know because at the end of the day you can tolerate something till your body fights back and no longer tolerates it, you know? So that's how I see it. So I think it's beautiful that you have this, this passion to, to let others know that, you know, and maybe this is what you need to do because not a lot of people go to nutrition after going through the medicine. I mean, who, who told you that to do that or what, what made you realize like, maybe it's my food. Yeah. Um, after being to so many doctor's appointments and them not being able to figure it out. And then finally them saying, you know, we're just going to cover up the problem with this. And literally, let's see, the, the, uh, the side effects of the medication that they wanted me to take was pages and pages and pages like lung clots, you know, um, like brain bleeds, heart attack, like all kinds of things. And I was like, what? Like, let's just get to the root of the problem. And like, what's happening? Like, I don't, you know, I don't want to just cover it up. And yeah. actually it was a relative that said, maybe you should try this route. And, oh, I'm so glad that I did. Cause I, you know, I haven't, I don't need to take medication for that. Like, I'm totally fine. Like, and it's, like I just have I just feel amazing and I know you know being on those medications I would not for sure oh. and not I'm not against medication if someone needs it they need it right mm -hmm. but I you know for sure I always say you should try the you know, try the natural way first try just eating whole real food the way God made us to yeah. to eat you know I, I absolutely agree I think that trying the holistic way you know as people say or outside western way i guess people say whatever you want to call it right whatever you want to label it to be i actually believe what you just said like try natural you know try the regular remedies because they've been working for years before we migrated onto the country and onto the land so then why and it's been working so why not try it again you know what i mean why not try because maybe your body needs it and not a lot of people are knowing that your ancestry DNA is still within you and it affects you. So knowing all of these details is very important. I think it it, it is a very good beneficial. I mean, do you, did you did you already know your DNA type already so that you knew that this was going to be this autoimmune disorder was going to come upon you or it was just something like it was just sudden? It was just sudden. I had no idea. I had no idea. So it just started, it started when like I would wake up in the mornings and I would suddenly have shooting pain in my feet. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know, that's weird. And then it started to get progressively worse. It would move around to different joints in my body. And like when it would ever go into my shoulders, it was just excruciating pain. Like, like I would just, any pain meds that I would take wouldn't even touch the pain, like Advil, Tylenol, nothing. I wouldn't even... And yeah, so it just got worse and worse. And then, like I said, I just started to kind of crumple up my joints. I couldn't, couldn't even open and close my hands. It was just, it was terrible. I was so unknowledgeable about it at the time that I actually went into the local health food store and said to the lady, 
I think there's something wrong with my bones. Like, I don't know what's happening to me. <laughs> and she said, well, it's not your bones. It's probably your joints. So I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I've learned a lot since then. That was like 13 years ago. I've done a lot of training and a lot of research. So <laughs> that is so cute. But I love that because it just shows your honesty how like, you know, I, I started from no knowledge at all, but now I feel very knowledgeable to share my my knowledge with the world. And it's better to share your knowledge than to hoard your knowledge. You know, that's one thing I truly believe because why would you want to hoard it? Why would you want to keep it to yourself and be selfish? Like, no, share it, be open. And one of the things that really caught my eye when you sent me your request was that you, you had a strong, strong prayer life, you know, to get you through this. And do you really believe that that really helped you through this journey and still now to this day to keep to maintain everything you know there is absolutely no question I know that the Lord led me to that doctor that naturopathic doctor to help me um I know that he has like he just gives me wisdom to to help other women achieve what they want to achieve with their weight loss and their health goals and yes like when you're going through something so uh painful and traumatic you know it, it affects you physically but also mentally and emotionally too. Like your, you know, your brain is like overload because your body is so stressed, you know? And so to just have that, that prayer and to know that you do have a solid rock, like Jesus is taking you through this, even though there's hard days, you can rely on his strength and, and the peace deep within. Right. So mm -hmm. absolutely. There's no question. I don't, I don't think I could have got through it if I didn't, if I didn't have Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's your testimony right I mean this is a beautiful thing to to have and to say that God helped you and held your hand through it's because you know sometimes when we're going through those hard moments the first thing that we do is feel alone you know yeah. the first and you know be, and it's because we feel this isolation because nobody knows what's going on in our mind no one nobody knows what's going on personally because we're all technically saying individual so we're all individually, subjectively perceiving life and experiencing life alone. So that's why they always feel isolated. So it's nice to know that even though you were going through this alone, you weren't going through this alone because you had you had God with you and you knew that that it was going it was a purpose in this in the in this time. So it takes time to get there. You know what I mean? It takes time, and I'm pretty sure you had your doubts sometimes. Am I right? Oh, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Many times, you know, but it's just like, no, you just gotta get into the word and just turn to him, you know, and he, he gives you the peace to walk the journey, whatever that journey is. And I always say your journey will lead you to your destiny. God will lead you through your destiny, through your journey, if you'll let him, you know, and, and like you said, for me now, because of this journey that I've been through is, the, my passion and I love it and I get to help other women do the same thing to heal and lose the weight and feel amazing and love how they look and that's what a blessing you know like it's just it's some days it's just mind-blowing like I'm like I can't can't believe how God has blessed me to be able to help other women like this it's so incredible oh and I love that last statement that you said because it makes you realize that sometimes we can be living in our miracles you know what I mean? And that's what where you basically are. You're living in your miracle because at that point, I'm pretty sure you were like, is there an ever going to be an end? Is this my life forever? Is this what I'm going to be stuck with? Am yes. I going to turn 80 and still be crippled? Like, no. And this is, look at you. You're, you're walking, you're talking, you're moving your hands, like nothing. I mean, that is the miracle of God. And that is a beautiful thing. And to lead you to coaching, to share this with other people. I mean, that's, that's a blessing, you know, that's most definitely a blessing. But what's the hardest thing that you ever had to deal with now that you are a coach? You know, when you're dealing with um, that one-on-one -on -one client, what, what would be that hardest time that you have? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. I would say probably the hardest thing that I deal with when I'm coaching someone is me wanting it for them more than they want it for themselves. So, you know, I know what it's like to be in that dark place where you feel terrible, you're exhausted, you have awful PMS or menopause and your mood swings are crazy and you don't like yourself because you know that you're not living your best life. I know what that's like and it's a terrible dark place. 
I yeah. also know what it's like now to be on the other side of it, obviously, right? And mm -hmm. so for me, it's super hard sometimes when I want it for someone more than they want it for themselves. Because I'm like, if you could just see yourself, you know, in, in three months, how much better you're going to feel and how amazing it's going to be for you. But, you know, that's a, that's a place we each need to come to for ourselves. We have to get sick and tired enough of being sick and tired that we're ready to take the action, whatever's required to move on to become our best version of ourselves. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I like they're like they're saying I mean, like sometimes you see people can see your potential before you can. And when it when so, when those people tell you like you can do great things, sometimes it, it it intimidates them. You know what I mean? It makes them feel like, oh, that's a lot of pressure, you know, or that's a lot for me to hold when I'm just me, you know, I'm I'm nobody. And that's where a lot of people feel that, oh, I'm just nobody. But to be honest, it if it wasn't because of my relationship with God, I don't think I'd be able to do what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Because I was one of those people for the longest time. That's how my my frame of mind was like, I'm just nobody. Like my voice can't do nothing. You know, I'm just, I'm just me. And that's when God would talk to me and tell me like, no, you're me, you're you, but with me. And as long as I'm there with you, then that's all that matters. Let me take care of the rest. And I'm like, okay. Okay. And then he made me read the beginning where, where, where Moses had got the same calling to do what God said, you know? So it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Isn't that yeah. awesome when God speaks to us like that? It's like, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I know it is. And it's beautiful because I love speaking with God, with other people like yourselves who, who, who knows the goodness that he shares and the, the love that he gives because it's truly a beautiful thing. Like uh, anybody can start tearing up and crying of thinking and looking back of all the times that he saved you and, and was good to you and provided for you. And times were like, Oh my God, I don't even know how I'm going to do it. But that's, that's the beauty of it. And I think, I think what you're doing is really good. Also, I really do believe it. I like, I know it in my heart because if you wouldn't do it, then why would you be here? You know, like I said earlier, you're really doing this. And I think, one of my last questions before we start wrapping up the show is, um, did you were you able to get your family members help with this same treatment? Were they able to cure their cancer with just changing their diet as well? Yeah. So my brother that was diagnosed at the same time I was sick, actually six weeks later, he passed away. Oh, so it was very sudden. So he didn't have an opportunity to get better. Um, I do have an aunt that was also diagnosed and um, that was 13 years ago. She chose to go with a um, alternative route just by changing what she was eating. She had to take some supplements and that kind of thing because it was cancer, which is severe, yeah. but she's still living. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she, yeah, has not, didn't do treatments. You know, she just feels great. She's, she's doing good. So, you know, that's not the route for everyone, I don't think, but we each choose for ourselves, you know? And so, I'm, I'm a big proponent for prevention. Let's not yeah. get ourselves to that point, right? Like let's take care of our bodies are a temple of the Holy spirit. The scripture says, so let's take care of this body. And when you feel good and you have the energy, then you can, we can do more. I mean, you, we just can, right. And so we're going to be able to do all the things that God calls us to do. If we are vibrant and have the energy and, and take care of ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that very much. I was going to ask what could be some lasting words, but I think you really summed it up right there. You know, those, are, those are some great last words to really leave my audience off with to think, because one of the biggest things that I constantly remind myself is preparation is better than procrastination you oh, know yes that's, that's a good one yes I, I'm like that's every time I'm starting to get lazy and I'm like eh, I'll just save it I'm like no Mitzi preparation is better than procrastination and I always have proof because every time I'm prepared I feel like oh okay I'm it's simple nothing bothers me but when I'm not and I lag man it's the stress just comes so I absolutely believe in that preparation is so much better so yes thank you so much Elsa for coming on my show and and sharing your perspectives you didn't have to you didn't have to be on my show you didn't have to share your time with me but you did so I really do appreciate you coming on and if anybody would like to know more about Elsa Maybe this is the route for you. Maybe this is the route that you're needing to change your life in some type of way because your health is calling for help. 
you know, maybe this is the route, you know. So if you want to check her out, I have her lovely photo on my website. So with her website, just boop, just click it and it'll go directly to hers and you can find out more and, you know, reach out, talk. Let's think about this. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Thank you so much for having me. What an incredible show you have. I love that, you know, it's faith based and you're helping people. This is so good. Thank you for what you do. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. See, oh, that's so sweet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the show. Always, always keep thinking y'all. Bye. <laughs>